Hello, welcome fellow traders. AMP Futures here presenting another how to video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the trading panel using the TradingView platform. Now, the trading panel is going to be a very important piece whenever you're using the TradingView software because what it's going to allow you to do is have an understanding of the status of your positions, status of your orders, and also the status of your account balance as well. So, let's first show you where the trading panel is located within your TradingView workspace. The trading panel is going to be located at the very bottom of your chart. Notice at the very bottom where it says AMP demo with a little green circle. This is letting me know what environment that I'm currently connected to. So right now I'm currently connected to a demo environment. Now, of course, if you're connected to your live account trading with real money, it would say AMP live instead. Now, whenever you kick, click where it says AMP demo or AMP live, this is basically going to open up the trading panel and minimize it. So if I click it, it opens up the trading panel. If I click it again, it minimizes it. Now let's go over some of the elements that are actually within the trading panel itself. First, you'll see what environment you're connected to. You'll see your account number. So this is a demo account. Of course, you would see your live AMP account number when connected to your live account. Top right corner, you'll see how much margin is being used up for the positions that you have open. Open trade equity, also known as OTE, as well as purchasing power. Then you also have some sub tabs as well. You have positions, which will allow you to see your individual positions as well as your net positions. You have orders, which also have sub tabs as well. So you can see all your orders, or you can see specific states of your orders. If you only want to see working orders, for example, inactive, filled, canceled, as well as rejected. History, same thing. There's sub tabs if you want to see all the history, the historical orders or positions, filled orders, canceled, as well as rejected. You also have account summary and your notifications log. All right. Now, whenever you click each one of these sub tabs, you'll notice on the far right column, there's this little button with three lines. This will just basically give you the ability to activate or disable specific columns within that sub tab, as you can see here. All right. So if I go to orders, you'll see that that button exists on every sub tab. All right. Now, one other thing I want to point out as well, in the environment display, you'll see a little arrow pointing down to, to the right. This will give you different options within the context menu. For example, activating or disable brackets management. If you want to get into your trading settings, so for example, right now, a very common setting that I see a lot of traders activate, which is not normally enabled by default when you first use TradingView, is instant orders placement. So normally it's, it's unchecked, as you can see in this state, by default when you first log into TradingView for the very first time. So if you were to go to place an order, it's going to basically say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? And then you have to click the button again to actually place the trade. Now, if you're all about efficiency and you're comfortable with TradingView and you're confident using TradingView, then you can go in there and activate that option, which I'm going to do right now instant orders placement. So now when I go to place an order, it's not going to give me an additional confirmation. I can instantly place that order upon the first click. Of course, personal preference as far as all the different parameters from your trading settings, if you want to activate, just go down the list and just choose the necessary changes and just click OK once you're done making those changes. I won't get too deep as far as some of the settings. It's pretty straightforward. You can change your password, summary row. You can also log out of your AMP connection from your TradingView account as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and demonstrate what positions look like, how to manage positions, and what orders look like, and how to manage orders using the trading panel. So right now, we're currently looking at the micro E-mini S&P 500. This is an exchange traded futures contract that trades on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and place a simple market order to buy one contract at the market price. All right, so it looks like we got filled at 55.65 and a quarter. You can see we have a long position there. Now let's go to our trading panel to see what that open position looks like within the trading panel. We're going to open the trading panel here. We're going to click on positions. Notice the first thing you'll notice is there's a numerical one, and that's letting you know that you have one position open. Now you have individual positions as a sub tab as well as net positions. The main difference between individual positions and net positions is when you go to net positions, this will allow you to modify the position or close the position. Modify, also known as protect position, is basically going to allow you to apply what we call a take profit and a stop loss OCO bracket order. So, for example, you'll notice that if you notice take profit and stop loss here, if I click this little button here where it says protect position, because right now we have a long position, but we don't have any protective stop and we don't have a limit order to, to get us out if we are profitable on the trade. So now I can activate take profit and stop loss and actually, I can actually set the parameters post trade. So now you can see now there's a take profit and stop loss. So that's what that protect uh, position does. If I want to get back in there and make any changes, to say I want to modify the take profit and stop loss value, I can simply click right back where it says protect position, and I can change the parameters and hit modify. 
And again, you can only do this from the net position sub tab. Notice when I go to individual positions, those buttons go away. And now if you go, let, while we're here, let's take a look at some of the information that we see as well. So it's letting you know what symbol you have a position open for, what side, so we have a long position as you can see there, how many, quantity, price, open trade equity, and also the timestamp and date of the trade when it was executed. Now if I go to net positions, notice now those buttons appear. All right, so now I can click this little X if I wanna close out the position at the current market price. All right, notice the position is now closed out. All right, and also too, the take profit and stop loss that we had attached to that open position was also canceled out as well. All right, now let's go ahead and show you how to manage orders. So right now, notice now we no longer have any positions, so that numerical one is no longer displayed. All right, so let's get back into a position. I'm gonna do a short position this time. All right, so now you can see we have a short position for one contract at 55, 65, 75, and there's my protect position, and there's my close button. Now, one thing that I wanna demonstrate, what I'm about to demonstrate is very important, so you wanna pay attention to what I'm about to demonstrate. So whenever you use an OCO bracket order, as I just demonstrated a moment ago, and when you hit the close position button, which is the X here, the take profit and the stop loss will automatically get canceled out because it's what we call an OCO bracket order. OCO stands for order cancels other, and that's linked to the open position. That's why when we click the close position button, it automatically canceled out the take profit and stop loss. But one thing that I wanna demonstrate that's very important. So what I'm gonna do right now, instead of attaching an OCO bracket, I'm gonna manually place a buy stop and a buy limit to get me out of this short position, but I'm not gonna use an OCO bracket order. So what I mean by manual, I'm gonna go on the chart here. I'm just gonna place a buy limit. That's our profit target to get us out of the short position. And here's our buy stop to get us out at a protective stop. All right, so instead of actually using an OCO bracket order, I manually place the buy limit and I manually place the buy stop exactly the way that I just demonstrated. Notice though, on the open position display, on the take profit and stop loss column, notice there's no values there because this is letting you know that you don't have an OCO bracket. These are manual orders. So what happens is if you get stopped out here, you have to make sure you manually go back and cancel out this buy limit order. Okay, so this is very important to understand because if you don't understand this and you're not aware of it, watch this. If I click the close position button under the net position sub tab from the positions menu, position's closed out, but look at the orders are still there. So I still have two working orders. So even though I'm flat, if the market were to either hit this buy stop or come down and hit this buy limit, it's going to get me into a long position and the worst scenario would be if you walked away from your computer thinking everything was okay, you have no orders working, you have no positions, and then you come back to a surprise and you see that you're upside down on a trade because you forgot to cancel out those orders. So the point that I wanna make here that's very important is if you manually place any orders, whether you're using a dome, whether you're using the order ticket, whether you're using chart trader, if you manually place the order and you don't apply that order as an OCO bracket order, there is no OCO in effect for those particular orders. So whenever you close out positions, you need to be mindful to go back and check to make sure you don't have any working orders, because otherwise, if you don't cancel those working orders out, you can be in a scenario where you're in a position without even knowing it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out these orders by clicking the X here. And now we no longer have any positions and we no longer have any orders. What I would recommend doing perhaps is whenever you open up your trading panel, when you're done trading for the day, you probably want to look at all these sub tabs and make sure you don't see any numerical values next to positions and orders because that'll give you an indication letting you know whether you have orders working or not or position open or not. All right, so now I want to show you one more time real quick. I'm going to get, it, get into a long position here. One more demonstration because this is very important. All right, so we have a long position. This time, I'm going, to actually, I'm going to actually attach a take profit and stop loss. All right, so we'll just keep it simple. This is an OCO bracket order. All right, so now you can see the take profit and stop loss is actually there. So whenever you see it here, this is letting you know that this is an OCO bracket order. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to place, what do we have, a long position? So I'm going to place a sell stop here. That's a manual order, remember. It's on the chart. You can see the order is three. All right. Now watch this, if I close out the position, you'll notice that take profit and stop loss will go away. But look at the sell stop, it's still there. Okay, so that's another demonstration letting you know that the manual orders will stay there until you manually cancel it out. So now I can go to orders and I can click this X to cancel it out. Now while we're here, we don't have any positions at the moment, we're flat, but we do have a sell stop working. Let's show you how to modify working orders as well. So when you have orders working, Again, you'll see a numerical value under the orders tab that's letting you know how many orders you actually have working. So right now we have one order working. 
right, we're going to go to the working tab because we only want to look at the working orders. I don't want to dig through all the all the orders to try to find it. As you can see there, there's working, but just there's too much noise. I want to I want to I want to narrow it down to only the working orders. So I'm going to click the working tab instead. All right, now what I can do here is I can click this modify order button, and this is basically going to allow me to make modifications to the order. So pretty straightforward. I can even change. It looks like you can't change the order type. So once you have a specific order type placed, in this case stop. The only thing you can really change is the price and quantity, and you can attach a take profit and stop loss as well. So let's just, for example, change it to, uh, let's see, 55, 53. So let's just move it up a little bit to 55, 55 even. All right, let's see. There we are. All right, now we're going to hit modify order, and now you can see the, the sell stop has been modified to a price at 55, 55. All right, to cancel out the order, we're going to hit cancel, and now the order is canceled out. All right. So again, recap, the trading panel is going to give you access to view the status of your positions, to view the status of your orders. You can also view the history, account summary, and notifications log. Notifications log might be handy. For example, you're trying to place an order. For some reason, the order is not going through. You can see maybe you might be getting rejected due to insufficient margin requirements. So you can check your notifications log to see if you're actually getting rejected. And normally it'll tell you you're getting rejected because you don't have enough margin. So that's exactly what the notifications log is going to be. Uh, the account summary as well will give you an idea of what you've done throughout the day. And also, again, history will allow you to view different history for all the orders that you place, whether you want to see the entire history, only filled orders, canceled, or rejected. And this is how you use the trading panel using the TradingView platform.